Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're in my 2021 Model S. Uh, we're gonna do a quick video on full self-driving. Uh, as you can see here, I have it set up here at an intersection. And what's gonna make this video a little more unique than a lot of the other full self-driving videos online right now is that we're gonna do this in the rain. So as a lot of you know that full self-driving does have a few more challenges in the rain. So I wanted to kind of highlight that for you guys. So as you can see here, we're driving about 16 minutes here. We're just gonna be heading to our neighborhood here. It's called Ruby Hill in Pleasanton, California. And we're sitting here at an intersection. Uh, the rain's coming out. The reason the rain kind of affects full self-driving is full self-driving for Teslas is all built upon visual recognition and the different cameras that are in the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate full self-driving. Uh, right now you can see the light just turned green and the car is going to be driving itself So I will be uh, guiding the car making sure that it's doing everything as it should so far it is Over here on the right side you can see our maximum speed We're going to get up to is 45 miles an hour and that does automatically adjust Based upon the speed limit of each road that you're on so as the speed limit changes it will adjust to that uh, uh, approximate speed now you can increase it by going to this wheel here and actually increasing it here you can see it's now at 47 so it will go um, anywhere from 5 to 10 maybe even 15 miles over the speed limit which makes it a little bit easier on the main console here you're going to be able to see your route which is highlighted in blue here and then uh, the car itself needs to make sure that uh, you are constantly paying attention uh, so one of the things it does is it has a safety mechanism in place where there is a camera right up here And it does look to see if your hands are on the wheel Every about minute or two minutes it will verify you can see it right there It's verifying it wants my hands in the middle to check to make sure that I haven't fallen asleep Or I'm not distracted looking at my phone This camera here will look for things like if you're looking at your phone texting or anything like that and then it will alert you that you need to pay attention and put your hands on the uh, uh, the yoke wheel here so that you know uh, what you're doing while full self-driving is engaged. You can always turn off full self-driving and then this camera will not look at those different things. And this is because a lot of people out there have kind of abused full self-driving by falling asleep, playing games on their phone or texting. So it does uh, kind of follow that all along here. My son's here with me as well, although he may not do a lot of talking, but uh, hopefully he will, we'll see. So as you can see, the rain is fully out here. The cameras are trying to identify the, the lines and the lanes in the road. The middle console, or sorry, the uh, console here where the speed and all those things, you can see what the computer is actually seeing. So right now you can see it sees the car in front of me. You can see that it even sees the U-Haul truck in front of that car and then the other car that's kind of passing in. So it does a really good job of um, taking in all that information from the cameras, um, basically adjusting it for what is happening on the road. And then the, um, the AI, the artificial intelligence, is determining what types of different things it should be paying attention to, and then how to uh, adjust for them in real time. Uh, so that's kind of how the AI works with uh, autonomous full self-driving here. So as I mentioned, um, Tesla is currently at um, full self-driving or autonomous driving level two, which means that the driver does need to guide it and pay attention. It does pick up the yellow traffic light and it will stop now red. You can see it also highlights that here right inside the uh, frame. So that's part of how the um, artificial intelligence does determine uh, red, yellow, or green lights. Um, and so you see as soon as it turns green, the car will start to creep forward and then it will go up to that uh, speed limit there at 35 miles an hour. Um, now this is kind of an interesting road because of uh, the way the lines are. You'll see this road will merge into uh, two lanes up above. Um, and then there will be a stop sign coming up here. Uh, but the car overall does a really good job. Again, this is kind of a test to see how well it does in the rain. Uh, the 
rain has affected it because sometimes the raindrops can get in front of the cameras, uh, which makes it a little bit harder for the uh, full self-driving to fully understand what it's seeing. And so sometimes when it is raining too hard or uh, you might have fog outside, it is difficult for the full self-driving to actually recognize the different elements that are in front of it. And then in some cases, when it's really hard to see, it will actually deactivate it and will not let you use full self-driving. So it's kind of interesting. What do you think, Lewis? Uh, I think it's pretty cool. However, it has a few drawbacks that um, you should be careful while looking at the road for. Yeah, that's a good point, Lewis. Like, a lot of times with full self-driving, you really have to um, pay attention. And I think that the challenge is when people use uh, computers these days or they use any kind of uh, uh, like a switch in your house to turn on a light, when you hit it, you're always expecting it's going to come on and it usually does. Um, with full self-driving, you cannot depend on that it's always going to be accurate. You constantly have to pay attention. Even if it's accurate today, with the different elements that are out there, it may not be accurate tomorrow if the elements are different or if there's a truck or a car, all of a sudden a kid comes running out in the middle of the street. You do need to pay attention. Now, most of uh, the analysis that Tesla has done has proven that full self-driving is safer than a human driving. However, you always need to pay attention and make sure that it's, it is making the right decisions. What do you think, Lewis? When you start driving soon, do you think you would use the full self-driving? I would abuse it. You would abuse it, yeah. Yeah, so th some people do abuse full self-driving. I've seen they'll put weights on the steering wheel to kind of disguise that your hands are on there. Now, turn now right it's supposed to turn right here. You'll see the car will turn on its blinker. It's going to move into the right lane. It's going to see that it's a red lane, red light. So it will creep up here and then it will slow down. And then um, sometimes on a red light right now, it will start to creep forward and turn on a red light if it is legal. Or of course, like that light there, it just turned green. So it's going to go ahead and move forward. Now better ride to stay on Vineyard Avenue. So we're going to continue down this road here. I am going to increase the speed limit to 40 miles an hour here. Um, it just seems a little more appropriate to go five, six, seven miles an hour over the speed limit. Most people do here, so I'm going to creep it up to 43. Uh, you can see on the primary map here, uh, we are routing um, up Vineyard um, Avenue here, going all the way to uh, the Ruby Hill neighborhood, which is just um, honestly just about three miles up um, from where we're at now. Now there's a yellow light here, so you will see the car slow down and um, then stop at the primary line here um, so that there is room for the crosswalk or any pedestrians uh, walking through. Now that it's turned green, the car will move forward. Sometimes I think it's a little bit slow to accelerate. Uh, it tries to do that to make it a little more gentle for people that are in the car. Um, again, the speed limit is set to 43. Um, so up here, the speed limit does adjust again to 45. You will see it automatically change on its own. But if we do want to go up to 50, we will have to use the wheel to creep it about, um, you know, good five miles over. Okay, so there's a speed limit here to 40. You're going to see right there. And you can see the car did see it and it just adjusted to 40. So I'm going to go ahead and use the wheel here and go up to a little bit faster than that. The speed limit will change again up here in a little bit where it will go all the way up to 50 as we get a bit closer to the neighborhood. Now it's at 45, so it will adjust. As you can see there, it adjusted. So I'm going to creep it up to 50 and then we'll go from there. It's actually doing pretty good in the rain though, don't you think, Lewis? Yeah. I'm surprised it wasn't like crashing and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to crash. I mean, I would interfere with it before it crashed. But I have driven uh, full self-driving in the rain before, and it was not nearly this good. So it looks like Tesla's done a lot of improvements with uh, full self-driving in the rain, which is certainly great to see. All right. So now it's 45 there, you can see. 
Okay, it looks like it did not catch that, so it's kept us at 50. Sometimes it catches it, sometimes it doesn't. So again, a reason that you constantly need to pay attention uh, to it and make sure it's, it's accurate. Now, when we get it towards the neighborhood, uh, this is a gated neighborhood, a gated community. And so far I have not seen Tesla's do very well with the gates. On one side of the gate is for people that live in the neighborhood and we have a transponder uh, on the car where it picks up that transponder, opens up the gate automatically. Um, but full self-driving doesn't really understand which uh, lane to go into for the gated community. Here's the speed limit 50. So I'm gonna jump it up just slightly. Um, but does a really good job of uh, controlling the lane. So I do manually take over when we get into the neighborhood just because of the, the challenge it has with the gate. Once you are in the neighborhood though, it does a really good job of even driving in the neighborhood and keeping the uh, appropriate speed limit. Now we'll um, turn on the right blinker here as we turn into uh, Ruby Hill. And then once we get um, closer to the gate, I will deactivate it by just tapping on the brake pedal once. And then you can see it does its turn all on its own here, does a really good job. But as you can see, we get up here towards the gate, um, it doesn't really recognize it. So see, I put my foot on the brake to take it over. Uh, it does not see that gate very well at all. So hopefully Tesla will, will work on that. I, I did hear there's a, uh, really good update coming out very soon uh, it's full self-driving version 12 uh, version 12 is supposed to be a massive update like they re-architected a number of key components uh, with full self-driving so we should see that popping up uh, very soon um, I know that they've started to distribute that out to uh, some Tesla owners I do have mine on um, what they call uh, advanced software updates um, and uh, more aggressive updates. So as a, as a beta tester for full self-driving, I am on that list, but um, I have not been chosen yet uh, to get version 12. Um, the moment I do, I will upgrade it and I will certainly do uh, a few more videos for this. In 500 feet, so. turn right onto PA Monte Drive. So Lewis, what do you think of... Uh, how we, we drove all the way from your uh, your jiu-jitsu class all the way home in full self-driving. What do you think of that? I'm really surprised about it. I thought it was going to um, get interfered and have you drive some of it. Yeah. It's pretty cool that it, it does such a good job. I mean, with version 12, again, coming out soon, I think that uh, it's supposed to be huge and a big difference. So we'll certainly do some testing on that. But I'm wondering if it can handle the neighborhood gate when we do get there. So it'll be interesting. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, like the channel. I really appreciate that. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, everyone.